Amanda here from createyourfuture.co. So today I have Melissa joining us. Hi, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Hi, Amanda. And Jerry. <laughs> I was when I was inter when I was doing the introduction, I heard Jerry say, mention me too. Guys, Jerry's got a toucan, isn't it cute? Because it's winter, it's got a little pom-pom. So <laughs> guys, we have a really exciting video on how to change your circumstances. So we're gonna cover um actually a, a really great success story that we've got, like an example between me and Melissa, which actually we have both sides of it, which illustrates, you know, how we can quickly change circumstances and how everyone is actually you pushed out and your thoughts are constantly transmitting. So um yeah, so that's what we're gonna share. And of course, guys, we do have a free course. It is how to find your blocks to manifest anything fast. Definitely check out the link in the description below as well as Melissa's got lots of affirmation bundles and courses to help you change your circumstances so for instance she's got a money mental diet challenge if you'd like to manifest more money that's an excellent course to check out and she is available for coaching so yeah let's dive right into this I think I need to hear your side of the story and then I'll tell my side and then we'll talk about it a bit and how people okay. can apply this in their life okay so here's what happened so a couple of weeks ago, I called Amanda and when she answered the phone, she was super grumpy and I was like, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? She's mad at me. Oh my God. Like I just started spiraling in my head, trying to figure out why she was upset with me. What did I do wrong? And I felt really bad about it. And it was, I was really surprised because she's never that way. So I sat there for a minute and I was like, oh my gosh wait a minute, do I really want to create this? Like, I, I don't want that to be what's true about this. I'm going to decide something different is true. So I started affirming and to myself, of course, she's not mad at me. Of course, everything's fine. I just called her at a bad time. She must be really busy or, you know, dealing with something else and distracted. And, you know, I just happened to call when that happened. And so she's totally going to tell me that she's so sorry and everything's fine. And she just, she was dealing with something else at the time. It, you know, she's not mad at me at all. And I had to keep I had to keep telling myself that because my brain really wanted to go to that initial story about how she was mad at me and how, you know, oh my gosh, what's wrong. So I kept redirecting my thoughts and redirecting my thoughts. And about, I don't know, like 10 minutes later, I got a message from Amanda that was like, I'm so sorry. I was dealing with something else. It totally wasn't you. I'm not mad at you. Please don't be mad at me. Everything's good. <laughs> so it just proved to me okay, obviously everyone is you pushed out. This is what I intended was going to be true about it. And look what showed up. Exactly. And you know, it's, it's so my side of that story was, is I was bickering with Jerry here and uh, <laughs> I wasn't in the best mood and the phone rang and um, I answered it and I, yeah, I was, very I didn't answer it the nice bubbly way I usually do and was really short and to the point and got off the phone quite quickly actually I think I was crying at the moment actually and then it was so funny because after I got the phone I was like I thought to myself I'm like oh no what happens if Melissa thinks I'm mad at her what is if she thinks this is like about her and it's nothing to do with her and then I was like no no she's fine she's over it and then I went back I'm like no I don't I don't know I'm like maybe I should say something and then finally I was like no so I sent a text and I was like no it wasn't you stuff's going on over here. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So, you know, as my thoughts were changing, her thoughts were changing, right. as her thoughts were changing, mine was changing. So now I know the question on everyone's mind is, is who was creating what? Well, you, when it comes to everyone as you pushed out, I could only look at it from my point of view. So my point of view is I created that whole situation, right? And then, you know, but for Melissa's point of view, she can only look at it like she created it. So everyone's going to take responsibility just for what their part of it was. Because right. in my point of view, if I say, well, if I didn't, you know, if I just said, well, you know, she's worried, she thinks it's about her and she thinks I'm mad at her and I left it there, then it would have stayed that way in my reality. And, you know, and, and my re reflection from her reality would have reflected that back, right? Right. Whatever you believe is true is what you get to experience. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. So how do you apply that to changing your circumstances? Well, I think the biggest thing that Melissa did there was she went from spiraling out of control, taking it personally and making it mean something about her to flipping that script to going, no, no, this isn't about me. It was something else. And it was really no big deal. And be once we 
stop putting the blame on ourselves and taking it personally, it's so much easier to change. Yeah. It's so much easier yeah. to change. That's really it is taking it personally. That's the thing. You know, a lot of people, I see this a lot with clients, you know, their first instinct is to take something personally and internalize it and make it mean something bad or something negative. And so it really is a conscious effort to make every circumstance work in your favor. Even if you can't see it right now, decide something good about it. Decide something better is true about it than your initial bad negative uh, thoughts, you know, just yeah. choose a better thought. Well, exactly. And you know, that just got me thinking too, right? Like, let's say for instance, right. Um, you know, that, that Melissa didn't change around the story and kept going on that. It's about me taking it personally. Now she's just created an extra story trying to figure out what she has done wrong or what's wrong with her for her to create this when it was nothing. It was just, a, you know, it was just a whisper of a thought that created it. I'm sure, you know, even a, a like a general assumption of, you know, sometimes people are in a good mood. Some people, sometimes people aren't. And then that sparked, you know, the, my reaction and this is from her reality. And then, you know, taking it personally, like, what did I do wrong? I'm not good enough. And now we're created an extra bit of story when circumstances don't mean anything. They're empty and meaningless. And they're only in place in your reality because you thought of it. You thought of it. That was it. Why is Jerry late? Because you thought of it. Does it mean anything? No, it doesn't mean he disrespects you. He doesn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. And you decide, you decide what everything means. What does it mean to you? You know, that's, that's the biggest Thing I always try to remind myself is I get to decide what this circumstance means to me. I get to decide what I'm going to believe is true about this and how it's going to play out for me. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, so what I like to do in my reality is I take a look at my circumstances, what's showing up, and I get really clear on what I want, because whatever's showing up, and if I don't want it, I'm obviously very clear on what I, I what I don't want. But being clear on what you don't want isn't quite enough, you've got to take it a step further and go, well, if I don't want this, what do I want instead? Right? Like, that's the big thing It's like, what do I want instead of this? Okay, so yeah. let's say you're getting the hot and cold behavior, and you always have to reach out. Well, we know you don't want that so what do you want instead i want consistent behavior where they always want to be with me and i want them constantly initiating contact with me and asking me out and wanting to spend time with me okay great now that we've got that clear goal we need to make sure all our thoughts are in line with that so once we use the combination of not letting things that show up in our reality make take it personal give it a bad meaning and we start giving it a good meaning you know, like a, you know, a, any like a meaning like, okay, well, you know what, they were just busy, they do want to be with me rather than they were busy, and they don't want to be with me, right? Right? Yeah, always make it work in your favor, always turn it around to the opposite, you know, a better, a better ending, better outcome. Exactly, exactly. And then once you put those coordinates in, make sure you stick on your mental diet, right? I think another thing that really helps with having circumstances don't matter is practicing manifesting, mm -hmm. like practice it. Like I've always talked about those little lists of little mini manifestations, right? And when you do those enough, and you start manifesting these things, like someone giving you a rose or someone opening a door for you, or I remember one time I, I intended like old ladies would say that's cool to me. And they did. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, my goodness, right? Like things, things that are not quite, um, you know, sorry, the doorbell rang, um, things that are not quite um, common, but they're just uncommon enough that you know that you've created it. You build that belief in yourself, you build that trust, and then it's easier to let go of your circumstances, right? You right. Know, and, and also practicing on things that maybe you're not super emotionally attached to. Yeah, um, that can help too. You know, sometimes with personal relationships, it can, it can feel harder or it can feel impossible just because you've got so much contrary story going on. And that actually reminded me of another point, you know, we talk a lot about finding your blocks on this channel and li limiting beliefs and things. And, and really all that boils down to is if you are telling yourself anything contrary to what you desire, anything that means that what you want is not true, that that is what we would consider a block or a limiting belief, you know, you, you can call it many things, but it's basically thinking something contrary to what you want. 
Exactly. And you know what? A block is so easily changed. One second, I'm like, Jerry doesn't like me. The next second, I'm like, Jerry likes me. And, you know, so like, let's go back to our example, right? Let's say when Melissa was thinking, or when I was thinking even, okay, so like, I let's go with my point of view. I, I don't want Melissa to ever think that, you know, there's something wrong with her. Or she's done something wrong, you know, depending on my reaction. So if that's my, out, my outcome, my goal is that, you know, I want to have a happy, you know, relationship and people to feel good around me, then me thinking that Melissa's going to think it was about her is a block in that moment. But just as quickly, I went and said, no, no, she knows it's not about her. You know, I definitely knows. And just to make sure of that, I'm going to send a message. And then boom, as soon as I had that thought process, I shifted and that block went away. And I was now in line with my end goal. So blocks aren't this big, scary thing. And, and, you know, now the other thing people say sometimes is, well, intend you have zero blocks. Mm. So let's look at our story. Could I have said, okay, Melissa's like mad at me or she thinks that it's about her and she's going to take it personally. And then all of a sudden I say, I've got zero blocks and resistance. No, and because you never changed your story. It right. doesn't change the story. Right. Not a single bit. Right. That intention is really, really good. If you're like, I have blocks and I don't know what they are. But I mean, you've got to change the specific actual thought because thoughts are things. So right. the thought needs to be changed. Me saying I've got zero blocks and resistance, you know, to having this happy relationship. But yet I'm thinking in the same breath and the same and thought. Why don't you have it right now? <laughs> yeah, well, why don't I have it right now? Or she's going to think that I'm mad at her, right? I mean, you know. Right. Because, you know, saying you've got zero blocks and resistance doesn't change the fact that you think someone might be like, take it personally or be mad at you or whatever the case may be. Right. So, you know, it, I, I look at blocks as opportunities. I mean, block right. opportunities. Oh, right? they're, great. they're great because that's how that's how you figure out what you prefer. That's how you figure out new desires. You know, like, it, you know, if you are feeling bad because somebody you're perceiving somebody treating you badly, that's how you know, oh. I don't prefer to be treated this way. I prefer this instead. People are only this way to me now. You know, that it's it's awesome feedback. So we can keep changing uh, everything to be what we want. Yeah. And you must have made that intention because I'm pretty sure I've been pleasant every time I've asked you. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. And you too, Jerry. Right. And I've been intending me and Jerry get along. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's exactly. And then actually one thing that too, where I'd like to add is when I did message Melissa, she did message back and said to me, she's like, no, I figured it wasn't, I figured if it was me, you would have said something. And, you know, and I was like, yeah, exactly. I would have said something. <laughs> but I think that's a very good rule to go with is, you know what, if somebody is, um, you know, not treating you the way that you want, create the story that it's something else. It's not you. And if it was you, they would tell you. And I live by that. I don't take anything personally, because I'm like, if somebody is having an issue, I mean, and having a bad day and being cranky or mean or whatever, I'm like, wow, I'm like, what's going on with them? I'm not all of a sudden like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? What did I do? Because I'm like, no, I intend that everybody's responsible enough, you know, to man up and say, well, look, at, I've got a problem with you. And if they don't say that, well, then business as usual, that's their problem. <laughs> right, right. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to think about healing any relationship, any kind of relationship, you know, it, no matter what kind of falling out or fight or, you know, break up, whatever, you know, if you can just assume something better is true about it and you know, even if they said straight to your face, I don't like you or what or whatever, you know, decide something different is true. Decide that they didn't mean it. Be and this is why or they were going through something or, you know, they were afraid or, you, you know, you can create a million different stories as to why it's not true. But the point is you want to change what you believe is true about it to get a different, better outcome with them. Exactly. My thing when, you know, things like that, like breakups or arguments happen, I always say this. I'm like, my assumption is, okay, they were just upset. They didn't mean it. I mean, I've said things that I didn't mean when I was upset in the moment. Um, you know, the other thing I say is, okay, they're going to think it over and realize that that's not true, you know, and I'm not going to take it personally, you know? So, you know, I mean, there's been times, you know, myself where I've looked at a situation and thought one thing and then, you know, 
I've changed my mind on the situation and went, oh, I looked at that all wrong, right? So, you know, giving other people the benefit of that doubt that, you know, if they're not ready for a relationship or saying they don't want a commitment, you know, I would create the story like, okay, you know what, they're, they're over it. They realize that I'm the best person for them. They've worked through whatever their issue is and they're ready to be in a relationship with me. Like right. I did that with Andrew, you know, he said he didn't want to move in with me. We nearly broke up. Five days later, he asked me to move in with him. And what changed in five days? I changed in five days. I started saying he's over his baggage and ready to move in with me. <laughs> and it's happening and it's happening right now. Instead of taking it personally of what's wrong with me, why don't you want to live with me? I'm a great wife. I'm a great girlfriend. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, and not taking it personally, just going, wow, you know what? I totally created, you know, guys that were previously married and divorced to have baggage. And it was as simple as that. It didn't mean anything. It was a statement I said. It had to show up my reality. And of course, when it showed up, when there was something I was emotionally involved in, at first, it took a hard time to detach from the story that me taking it personally. But once I did and started shifting it and assuming he was over it, then, you know, it really didn't take much time at all. Right. So, yeah, like you could have decided that Andrew saying that was that circumstance was an obstacle. And no that it just meant that you weren't going to live together. You know, you could have taken a whole different direction with that. But instead, you chose to persist in a better story, which resulted in a better outcome. Absolutely. My desired outcome. Some days I'm not sure if it's better, but definitely <laughs> my desired. Right, Jerry? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, the funny thing was, too, I'm pretty sure, right? I mean, you guys know me. I share my life in here. I'm pretty sure like a few days before I was talking to somebody about fighting with partners and spouses, right? And I'm pretty sure I didn't clean it up. So it had to manifest But whatever. You know what? Every argument makes us closer together. And I intend we always get along. <laughs> So guys, yeah, I hope you guys got some great tips from this. No, I know you got some great tips from this. Um, you know, great information, Melissa. Thanks for reminding me of that story before we did this video. I, that was, uh, that was a good one. It was nice to see the both sides of it. Right. So yeah, it's good yeah. when, when you think about everyone as you pushed out, it's really good to see it from both perspectives. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. And, um, it's funny, you know, the, the thoughts going, I know, you know, on a daily around here, I'll think of something and then Andrew will say it or, um, you know, or I'll think of something, um, or he'll think of something and I say it and, you know, he's like, get out of my head. Right. Like, and it's like, no, you get out of mine. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the important thing we'll leave you guys with is they think it's their idea when you think it right. So, right. you know, assume what you want them to think about you, assume what you want them to think about the situation and then they will think about it that way yeah right? and just in general assume better for yourself because you deserve it exactly you guys are all absolutely amazing thank you so much melissa thanks amanda and guys thanks for liking commenting sharing and subscribing and we'll see you in the next video Bye bye